So a recent guilty pleasure of mine has been indulging in the animated series Invincible over on Amazon Prime. If you're not familiar with it, it's based off the comic Invincible by the writer Robert Kirkman. Think DC Comics, but a bit darker, perhaps a bit more realistic, and definitely bloodier. Now, one of the concepts introduced to viewers is the White Room. Now, as the name implies, it's white, but what's most interesting about this room is the invisibility effect. Now, I don't want to throw out any spoilers here, but if you're a fan of the comics, you know that the White Room can be used to neutralize superheroes. Basically, it's a psychological thing. Because everything around them is invisible, they can't see the exit. They feel trapped. They literally can't see what's around them. All right, so all that's interesting, but what in the world does that have to do with why every young guy needs to pay attention to his style? The answer? It's all about hidden opportunities and hidden dangers. So imagine you're at a business event and you walk into a room. You don't know anybody. And in fact, everyone in that room pretty much looks the same, except for that well-dressed, well-put-together gentleman over there who's talking to three or four people and just looks like he's having a good time. Your first impressions of that person? They're well-dressed. They seem to know people. They are liked. So when that person walks your way, you introduce yourself. You are there to strike a deal. You're looking for the man in charge. Now, this guy isn't the man in charge, but he does know the woman in charge, and he takes you into another room to make the introduction. So, what happened there? Somebody made a split-second decision based off appearance and behavior, and opportunity came one man's way because of the way he behaved and he dressed. Now, it's important to note there were tons of other people in that room, but opportunity came the way of the man that had the confidence to stand out. And, gents, if you think about it, these small behavioral biases happen all the time. The reality, gents, is that human beings are lazy and biased. As anyone in sales or hospitality can tell you, you can't tell by the way somebody dresses how they're going to tip, how much they're going to buy. Yet, every study I've read, every experience I've had shows me that when people dress better, they're treated better when they're out shopping, when they're out going to a restaurant. Now, depending on the person, depending on the situation, this first impression bias can be relatively small. It can sometimes be a little bit bigger. But here's the thing. It's consistent which human beings are making decisions are making judgments on others. As such, this bias in business and in social settings can be cumulative. So think of it like investing, like compound interest. It builds up and compounds over time. It snowballs. It gets bigger. And over the period of a decade, it can have a huge impact on how much money you earn and the relationships you have in life. In fact, in the book, Beauty Pays, economist Daniel Hammermesh laid out how dressing well, presenting yourself well can have an effect on your bottom line to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. But to be honest, gents, the money is just one of the reasons that I think every man needs to pay attention to now, to be clear, gents, I am not downplaying the other parts of a man's life, your health and fitness, your personal relationships, your career and professional development, you being able to control your money, aka financial management, having social skills, being able to interact with people, having an outlet for your creativity, being able to do something fun. Gents, all of these are important. In fact, don't try to think of these in a linear fashion where one is more important than the other. Instead, think of it like a chain. As you already know, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And so, think of each of these areas, including personal style, as a link in the chain. My point here is if any of these links in the chain are weak, they're going to make the entire chain weak. Now, really quick, gents, one link in the chain that I didn't mention that deserves special attention is mental and emotional well-being. Probably even more so than style because people don't see it. Your mental health is something, guys, you've got to pay attention to. Now, gents, if you're struggling with mental health issues, if you feel that you need therapy, you need to check out today's sponsor, Better Help. In case you're not familiar, BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. Gents, with BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide variety of issues. I have used their services. Like a lot of you guys, I deal with the ups and downs of life. Years ago, I lost my sister to suicide, and that is a painful memory that still haunts my family. At times, there's a lot of pressure in my job. I've got seven kids I'm trying to raise successfully. I've got five companies that are screaming at me for attention. And on top of all that, the war in Ukraine has displaced my wife's family and they're now living with us. I'm here to tell you we're all dealing with issues and there's nothing wrong with talking to a therapist and working through these issues with a professional. Now, gents, here's how it works. You go over to their website and you're going to answer a few questions. Basically, your preferences, your needs. The goal here is that BetterHelp wants to match you with the right therapist in their network. 
And once you've been matched up, you can connect, you can talk with them any way you feel comfortable. Text, chat, phone, video call. On top of that, you can message your therapist at any time and schedule appointments at your convenience. Oh, and if there's not a great fit with you and the therapist, you can switch at no cost. Gents, in a nutshell, with BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism, you get the same quality as in-office therapy, but with a therapist that's actually custom-picked for you, plus flexible scheduling at an affordable price. To get started, gents, Go to betterhelp.com slash real men, real style. Again, that's better, H E L P.com slash real men, real style. Using this link, guys, you'll be able to get 10% off your first month and talk to somebody and get the help you need. Now, all the parts of the chain, again, it's important to understand they depend on each other. A big mistake that a lot of young men make is that they over focus on certain areas of the chain and they completely ignore style and mental health and other areas that in their minds just don't seem to be as important. And I definitely get it. If I had to prioritize the items in that chain, I definitely would put health, professional achievement and relationships higher than style. But there is a false belief there. And that false belief is that you don't have the time, energy, or resources to spread yourself across all of the different parts of the chain. And if you tried to spread yourself and your resources out equally, I could see that point. But the reality is you don't have to. In fact, you can put oftentimes a minimal amount into some parts of those chain and that will be fine for that season in your life. Again, let's take style as the example. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money to look good. You don't even have to buy a suit. Just simply need to make sure that your clothing fits, that it works for your body type, that it works for your professional situation. In fact, in many situations, that's why a suit is not the right outfit because you're working in a much more casual environment. Example being, you started a lawn care business while you're in college and it's doing pretty well. Well, could you level it up by actually having a uniform? So when you show up at that person's door at 7 a.m., you actually look presentable. You look like you're coming from a company and you look like you can charge what you are charging versus looking like someone that walked off the streets maybe is homeless, which I know is a cruel comparison. And who's to say what anyone looks like? But we do this because again, we are lazy, because we are biased, because human beings, we've got boxes in our heads of an idea of what each type of person looks like. Successful, not so successful, of dangerous, of safe, all of these things you want to use to your advantage because we know for the most part what these biases are like, especially across cultures. And yes, I know they are slightly different from culture to culture, but in general, a man that is well presented, that wears clothing that fits him, that actually is wearing the uniform of his business, whether it be a suit, whether it be a blue collar job, and it's just simply a long sleeve, blue collar cotton shirt with dark pants. The point is, when you look successful, when you look the part, you will get the part. Now, what about a lack of awareness, a lack of skills? Well, that's where I think that young men actually have a big step up over older guys is that you can make a lot of mistakes and people aren't going to judge you as harshly. You can go through different phases, different styles, different looks. You can experiment and have fun. Now, whenever I'm working with a younger guy, one thing that I tell them to do is just put together one single outfit and maybe copy it from a celebrity, from an athlete. You know, you've seen people in these looks and you're like, I really like the way that he's wearing those joggers with that hoodie. And it just looks more refined than anything I've got in my wardrobe. Well, figure out the brands, see if you can mimic that, get the fit and try to pull it off yourself. Again, we're just going for one outfit one look. Yes, no one's going to notice unless you go really extreme that you're mimicking the style of that celebrity, but you're going to feel confident in that look and that one outfit is something for you to build off of. Now, personally, I like it when a guy goes with a foundational piece. We're talking dark denim. We're talking maybe a dress shirt, a pair of classic loafers, or maybe even leather sneakers. Because once you've got an outfit put together with those classic items, all of a sudden you can add on maybe a jacket and there's a variety of different jackets. It doesn't have to be a sports jacket. You can go with a casual jacket, tons of options there. You can also keep that shirt, change out the trousers, bring in a pair of chinos, make the shoes a bit more casual, maybe a bit more rugged, go with a pair of boots. The concept here is the interchangeable wardrobe. The idea that you are adding new pieces to your wardrobe that work with the other pieces you already have. Similar to the concept of the chain, which we talked about earlier, these pieces build off each other. They're not really competing with each other. And as you start to build out a wardrobe, you realize, hey, if I've got four jackets, if I have four shirts, if I have four pairs of trousers and four pairs of of shoes that are 100% interchangeable with 16 pieces of clothing, I actually have over 200 outfits. Next up, let's talk about mixed messaging. As a young man, you are hearing society tell you, hey, don't care who cares what you look like. It matters what's in here. 
We've all heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. And you try to be the type of person that looks beyond how people dress, how they behave. And you really try to understand who they are as a person, as an individual. Now, personally, and as a father, I love this because I don't want my kids to ever be judged based off of how they're dressed because I know that they're good people. But as a realist, as someone that is aware of their own biased behavior at times, I have to say that the majority of the time, people aren't thinking like that. People are looking out for themselves and they are taking mental shortcuts. The reality is the general advice from society is not looking out for your best interests. And if you think I'm wrong, good, you're skeptical, but go out there and test it for yourself. Every man I've ever spoken to that has stepped up their style has started to notice the difference, especially when they get into the habit as a young man, all of a sudden they're treated with respect. They're treated better, not always, but it's those small incremental improvements across the board that they notice and all of a sudden starts to have an effect on their career and their social life. And again, getting back to the chain, where I love to see somebody step up their style is you're already a king in certain areas. You spend a lot of time in the gym. I get it. You got a great body. But when you look at the clothing you're normally wearing, it's baggy. Nobody can actually see the amount of time that you spend in the gym and the profile, the silhouette that you naturally have. Well, guess what? When you start wearing clothing that shows that, especially in a professional setting, all of a sudden you stand apart, even though the clothing you're wearing isn't flashy. It's just simply the way it is fitting on you and the cut that it's naturally showing off your masculine shape. Now, for this next point, I want to go back to what I talked about at the beginning of this video, the white room. Now, spoiler alert, it hasn't been revealed in the show, but if you know the comics, guys, if even if you're a superhero in that white room, it's very difficult to fend off attack whenever you can't see what's coming at you. I say this because I know so many of you guys have taken care of your body. You work on your career. You've got so many things going for you. And what I hate seeing is a young man that basically doesn't see the attacks coming at him. He doesn't see that he's getting clipped from behind because of the way he presents himself. And think about it. I know a lot of you single guys, you could see a woman that's got a great build. She looks good, but you get up close, she doesn't smell good. In fact, she opens her mouth and you realize she's got horrible oral hygiene. So yeah, no matter how attracted you are to somebody, if they've got bad oral hygiene, if they've got bad grooming habits, if they stink, you're wondering when was the last time they showered? Yeah, you're going to be very careful about getting close to them, right? Well, gents, this applies to you as well. And I know, gents, that sounds obvious, but let's get back to the white room. You don't see it. It's not obvious. And that's where we're becoming aware and understanding, hey, what are the basic style rules? Is there anything I'm violating? Is there a behavior thing that I do? I don't even think about. I had a friend, he still, he still does this. He picks his nose. He doesn't even know he's doing it around other people. It's disgusting. And it's just something that he doesn't think about because it's never kind of been brought up to him. And tied right with this, gents, is personal confidence. Because when you've done everything in your power to present the best you. All of a sudden, you're going to feel better because you know you've, you've got competency. You know your job. You've taken care of your body. You are, you know, mentally there. You, you've worked on your social skills. When you have worked on all of your areas, you're able to present yourself in the best light possible. All right, gents. So, what did I miss? Let me know in the comments below and what video to watch next. Boom. I got you covered with this one right here. If you're a young guy, you are going to love this video. If you're an older guy, you'll probably like this video too. Guys, check it out and uh, I will see you in the next video.